I'm Lee Howard Stevens, and we're at PASIC 2023 in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm very happy here to be getting videotaped for Steve Weiss Music. We're here in the booth that we just closed down about five minutes ago. The crowds are still going out the door here. I'm standing in front of the Michael Burrett model marimba. This particular one was made in the all black look. That's not the stock look. We normally have all of our aluminum resonators just buffed into natural silver and then epoxy coated with a clear epoxy like you'd have on a kitchen faucet. It'll be durable for you know, 20, 30 years or whatever. Uh, so it's just natural aluminum. We don't paint the uh, resonators at all. So this happens to be the black MJB. So this has four inch diameter tubes in the bottom the same as our Imperial Grand, the same as our Roadster, but in this case, they're smooth bent instead of TIG welded or silver soldered as in the case of the uh, Imperial Grand. So this is our Roadster. The Roadster and the Imperial are, are kissing cousins in terms of instruments. They're identical in bar size. The only difference is the resonator material. This is a Roadster, so it has aluminum resonators. The Imperial has brass resonators. And for many people on planet Earth, it makes no difference. For me, it makes a difference. If I, when I have the two side by side, I can tell behind a screen which is a Roadster and which is an Imperial. The Imperial has a little bit more high frequency projection in a concert hall. This is a little bit, you could call it warmer, but I would call it just a little less bright uh, compared with the Imperial. However, it's also 100 pounds lighter for travel than the Imperial Grand. But otherwise, they're identical instruments. They're super wide bar on the bottom. The Imperial Grand has great bass, the best bass, I think, on planet Earth. And the reason is the bars are three and a half inches wide on the bottom, four inch diameter tube, and it rocks out down there. If you take a bar, any marimba bar, and you lengthen it, let's say it's a three inch wide bar. These are three and a half, but take a three inch bar. Well, here's a three inch bar. Lengthen it by one inch. You've added three square inches of bar material. Now let's shorten it back to where it was before and add a half inch in, in width. Now on a 20 inch bar, you've added 10 square inches of material. So a half inch of width in the bar increases the surface area of moving the air column by 10 square inches, whereas that one inch of length only adds three square inches. It's a dramatic difference, and you can hear it if you hear our bass next to really anything else on planet Earth. But the key comes from the coupling of round tubes, wide bars. Let's go to some other instruments. This xylophone is a Bob Becker model xylophone, and it's modeled directly after it's, I wouldn't say it's copied because there are a lot of things that are updated and modernized, but the keyboard geometry is copied after the artist special Deegan instrument. This probably is the loudest xylophone on planet Earth. And of course, when Bob uses it, Bob Becker uses it for solos, whether he's playing with concert band or with Nexus group as he did for decades and decades, he had to get over that whole percussion ensemble. And that's why he needed this particular xylophone. There's really no other instrument like it on the planet. And it's all tunable resonators, brass tubes, height adjustable. It's a modern, really sturdy uh, oak frame with the same Malatek height adjustments that most of the instruments have. Over here, we have our Infinity Glockenspiel. And the reason we call it Infinity Glockenspiel is because I don't know whether my lavalier is picking that up, but we're still going, so. This is our current model of Omega Vibe. We don't have fans in the tubes that spin. And there's a number of reasons why we don't. The first thing is we don't want junk in the tubes. We want the tubes to be open when you're not using vibrato. And also, the junk in the tubes requires you to take little chunks out of the tube to run that axle down the length. And typically, after a couple of bashes with a mallet, that axle is no longer straight and it starts to wobble and make noise. Most of the manufacturers 
are making instruments for the band room, and that's a separate business than what we do. We're making instruments primarily for the soloist and for the real fanatics out there. So in any event, this vibrato system hovers over the tubes and goes elliptically so that when we turn it on, um, it's, it's easing in and out. It's not a radical sound. So next thing about it is it has progressive dampening. Progressive dampening is a patent that we have for a concave gel damper. When you put the pedal down here, nothing happens. And that's what should happen. Nothing, nothing should happen. It shouldn't play by itself. But the point is the a uh, typical damper pad on a vibraphone is a felt, half inch thick uh, piece, and it grabs the bar right at the very end. And the very end of the bar is vibrating pretty violently. So when you attempt to feather a note and lighten up and move, move the pedal up lightly, it buzzes. They all buzz to one degree or another. So we have solved that in a couple of different ways. One way is this progressive dampening with a shaped um, damper pad that goes like this. It grabs first a little closer to the node and then as you let up the pedal it rolls up and touches the end. So it eases in the dampening. Now you can do it quickly and dampen like that or you can go very slowly and I can actually do a diminuendo with the pedal. I'm going to take that F sharp out. I did the diminuendo with my pedal. The bar would ring by itself for a very long time, but I'm going to do it now. I'm going to take it out quickly, but I'm going to take it out with the pedal. I just did that diminuendo like that. Try that at home and see what happens, and you're going to hear buzzing. Over here, we got my series. I don't advertise it much. Uh, I'm not doing as many concerts as I used to in the old days, but uh, these are my idea of what a marimba mal should be like. They're mostly multi-tonal, meaning that as you play louder, higher velocity strokes, louder, they're going to get brighter and move with you. But the, the main thing that they do is that they roll smoothly at uh, lower dynamic levels. Um, and um, so those are the white ones, the Stevens line, they come in. Uh, the Maltec numbering system is really unusual. We have a number assigned to most models that will tell you before you buy it approximately how bright the tone will be at maximum volume. So marimba mallets go from around zero to maybe 25, and then xylophone mallets will go over in that 25 range up to the low 40s, and then glockenspiel mallets will generally go from 40 to 50. That's the range. Then we have here the Escape 10 Ensemble Series. That's uh, Annie Stevens and Andrea Vinay. They've designed a beautiful line of ensemble mallets. Uh, below mine, actually, way down here, are the uh, Eric Samut mallets. Eric of um, marimba and uh, composition fame, as well as being the, uh, the uh, principal percussionist with the Orchestra of Paris. So we've got three models of Eric's. Here we've got Kevin Bobo mallets uh, from uh, IU, Indiana University. We've got Mark Bozeman mallets. Here's um, Scott Herring, University of South Carolina. I mentioned the Escape 10 Ensemble Series. Here's a guy that a few people have heard about before. That's Michael Burrett. <laughs> We've got his line of black solo mallets, um, and they come in um, zero. They come in, let's say, five, eight, 13, and 18, I think. It's a lot to memorize, but uh, those are his uh, solo mallets. And then we have a new line of his mallets that are his ensemble mallets. He's got a new line of four different models for ensemble use in, in uh, that blue. Um, Marta Klimasara, one of the great marimba players of the world, won the world marimba competition. She teaches at uh, the uh, Stuttgart uh, Hochschule in, um, in, in Germany, and she's got a great marimba program there. She ran the last world marimba competition in October or September of 22. And in fact, she won it herself in the year 2001 or 2002. We have then a Chamber Series mallets. These are the purple ones. Um, the Chamber Series and the Concerto Series are similar. The Concerto Series are a little heavier version. The yarn is similar between the two, but the Concertos have a heavier center core. Concerto Series are staples in the Malatech lineup. 
um, and they've just been they've been made for forever. We're, this is the first uh, polyester mallet ever made. You just cannot wear it out. We have never, ever, ever, to my knowledge, ever gotten back a set of concertos with frayed yarn. Now, if somebody's playing on razor blades, you could cut through it, perhaps, but from normal playing, th they just will never wear out. Then we have m -Tech series. I can't call them student mallets. They're not students at all, student mallets at all. They are just um, selectively taken the parts that don't cost us as much put into a mallet, but it's just as professional, it's just as good as, as our other models. There's three of those that we have. There's, I think we're sold out of a couple here already, but three models, soft, medium, hard, basically, in m -Tech models. Then we're into the vibraphone world here. Mike Manieri, just inducted into the PAS Hall of Fame. Mike played last night on the Andy Norell concert, just an unbelievable concert last night. And uh, Mike, Mike's been with us as a mallet endorser for many, many years and uh, recently joined the Team Omega and now he's very happily playing on an Omega vibraphone saying, oh, it feels like home, finally. And he's with all his buddies with the other Team Omega guys. Uh, Chen Chen Lu, one of our new vibe artists, uh, a short mallet in the style of the Albright mallets, but not actually in the Albright series. We have the Albright uh, license. Uh, Fred Albright, some of you may know the Albright uh, snare drum book from uh, years ago. And we got Joe Locke mallets in three different models. We got Ed Smith's. We got Jazz Classics. We've got Dave Samuels mallets, some of the best sellers ever in heavyweight and regular weight. And I think that's it for the vibe. We've got Tony Maselli's, but they're out on the rack. They're not over here, or they're already sold out. Maybe that's possible. And then we've got marching mallets. We've got a whole thing. Nobody knows that we make marching mallets, but we've got an e-motion series, a beautiful line of mallets. One of the most clever things is they're evenly weighted. The super softs and the super hards are almost identical in weight, so you can mix graduated sets, and they feel natural. They're double co color-coded on the top and on the tip, so you can put them in this way or put them in this way. And they're extremely durable mallets, e-motion for marching, so all of this stuff that I've been covering here, where do you go to get it? Steve Weiss Music, that's the best place to go. They've got everything, generally they've got it in stock, or they can get it really, really fast for you. Great prices, super service, and the people there know what they're talking about. When you call them up on the phone, they're percussionists. So call Steve Weiss Music.